The next virus to be taken into consideration would be mumps. Mumps is also a type of paramyxoviridae virus and this mumps, jocularly we remember that, mumps will give you bumps. When mumps punches you, you will have a small swelling and that swelling happens in the parotid gland. So mumps is known for causing two major things. One is parotitis, the other one be orchitis. And the orchitis is generally unilateral. Only when you have bilateral orchitis and then that leads to adhesion and complication, you can look for sterility. Since mumps is going to attack only one single scrotum or testis, you will not have sterility. Sterility is very rare in case of mumps orchitis. But sterility is common in case of bacterial orchitis that happens following a complication. Okay, what about the mumps? This mumps belongs to rubula viridae. And it contains hemagglutinin antigen and also it contains neuraminidase antigen. Also it contains something called as fusion protein and its corresponding antigen. So that the binding of this virus to the host cell is stronger. Stronger binding to the host cell. Usually the incubation period is less than one month while it attacks children between 5 to 15 years. What was the last time we saw 5 to 15 years? It was the reactivation time for SSPA to happen. 5 to 15 years after the initial infections with the measles, you could have a chance of having the fatal SSPE. Okay, now look at this. Like measles, there is no carrier state in case of mumps also. And subclinical cases are also nil. And you have no animal interferences, so there are no animal reservoirs. These three statements go parallel to that of both measles and mumps. What is the peak period of infectivity? The infectivity can be between that of 2 days before onset of parotitis. So that is the period where the patient should be exerting a lot of caution so that he doesn't give it to other people. What are the complications that can happen in general? You have parotitis, APD, dymo, orchitis, aseptic, meningitis and pancreatitis. These are the common things that can happen as a complication of mumps infection. What is the uniqueness of parotitis? This is the most common complication. And this will be the first sign to be noticed when a patient has mumps infection. An epidemiocitis happens in the post-pubertal age group. So, if mumps attacks people who are more than 12 to 13 years of age, they can easily acquire mumps orchitis. Remember, you will be having testicular atrophy, but sterility is very rare. In case of aseptic meningitis, this is most commonly found in case of children. And what happens? Not much of neurological sequelae. So you are okay to have this particular aseptic meningitis whose picture can be very well clearly understood in case of CSF examination that tells you about lymphocytic predilection in this local area. What about pancreatitis? As you saw in case of measles, the beta cells of pancreas can be under attack because of which you can have exhaustion of beta cells which is the islets of Langerhans leading to early onset insulin dependent diabetes mellitus cut which can lead to type 1 diabetes mellitus. Okay, uh -huh. while this organism is known for causing aseptic meningitis, some people have rarely shown to have some kind of sensory neural hearing loss also.
the patient can have no chances of having any kind of teratogenic changes and pneumonia is not very common. Remember, the difference is that as you saw in case of head cell pneumonia, you will not have any kind of pneumonia in case of mumps like that you saw in case of measles. And remember, you will be having mumps vaccine given along with that of measles, the name of measles, mumps and rubella, where you had the measles vaccine having Edmonds and Zagreb strain, while the mumps vaccine will contain Leningrad strain. This is from Russia. The Leningrad strain can actually be sometimes be in combination with that of Zagreb strain, which is just a part of the Edmonds and Zagreb combination, the city from which this particular mumps strain was discovered and prepared. The very commonly used strain is Gerald Lynn strain. And remember, those people who are, who are showing any kind of hypersensitivity to the egg albumin or egg proteins are not supposed to be given this because I have already told you MIRI, M I R Y, mumps, influenza, rubella, and that of yellow fever and rabies can actually be contraindicated when a person is having egg injury or egg hypersensitivity. <laughs> okay. The next virus under question shall be the variant that is found in case of para-influenza virus is called as respiratory syncytial virus.